Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. This week we're going to show you our process of creating two incredible tables, both with burl wood but of different species. So we've got a buckeye burl with tinted resin and then an olive wood burl with an iridescent blue resin and both with brand new base designs. When this client came to us to commission these pieces, one of the most important things to him was the premium quality of the wood that we used. So starting off with this round table, he picked some olive wood burl, which Olive wood is pretty rare on its own, but to be able to find pieces in burl is especially rare. Then for the resin color, he wanted this iridescent blue, almost kind of reminiscent of opal color for the base layer. So it just happened that we recently released a new pigment color called Walter White, and those of you who know, you know. But this color gives exactly that opal-like appearance that our client wanted. So because these pieces have so much character in the edge, it was important to our client that he still be able to see that after. So this base layer, we're only doing about a half inch thick or about three quarter inches thick. And that's what's gonna allow us to still maintain that visibility. There's two ways you can go about doing the base layers. You can either let it fully cure for a mechanical bond and then you have to sand with 180 grit before you pour your next layer, or you can let the resin partially cure just so it's soft enough that you can dent it with a popsicle stick but it doesn't stick to that popsicle stick, and then you can go ahead and pour that second layer for the chemical bond. Both bonds are permanent and work quite well. And then it's to the other table that this client ordered as a part of the furniture package. So again, premium wood quality was of the utmost importance for this client, so we found some gorgeous slabs of Buckeye Burl. These are probably some of the nicest pieces that we had in stock at that time, just because of all the character that they had in the edge. So to maintain maximum visibility of that and also complement the wood, the client went for a tinted black resin. The tint is still going to allow lots of visibility of those burled edges once this piece is finished, and then the black color of the resin ties quite nicely into that natural staining that's in the Buckeye Burl. For both of these pieces, we're using our Black Forest Deep Resin as it's been specifically formulated for this application. You can pour it up to four inches thick and even greater with enough cooling. And it also has a really slow cure, so there's plenty of time for all the bubbles to get released and come to the surface. After curing for one week in the form, it's time to get these pieces popped out and ready to start flattening them. For our forms, we construct them from MDF coated in tuck tape for the side material, and the base material is HDPE. The reason we use both those materials is just because epoxy doesn't stick to them, so it's pretty simple when it comes time for demolding. You just need a mallet and everything comes off quite easily. From there, we can head down and get the pieces lifted onto our Avid CNC machine to begin cutting them to their final size. For this table, you'll notice the mold was octagonal, but we're actually going to be cutting it into a round shape. The only reason we did the mold that way was just to save on the volume of resin. And as you can see here, by cutting off those corners, we actually saved quite a bit of money. Another important thing to note for this cut is that we're going less than a quarter of an inch per pass. So there's multiple passes required to cut a table this thick, but it's the only way we can ensure we get a clean cut where the resin doesn't chip out, and we also don't risk breaking the bit and then potentially taking a big chunk out of the edge of this table. Once we've got most of the way down, we can get the piece flipped over and then use a flush trim bit on a hand router just to get that excess skin trimmed off. Another unique aspect of this furniture package is that the client wanted a really large roundover on the outside edges. So again, this is something that required multiple passes just to ensure we got a nice clean cut. But I think, especially with the round shape of this table, it just gives a really nice feel and profile to the entire piece. From there, we can get the pieces flipped over and begin planning for the leg pockets that are gonna fasten the base to these pieces. So. Because of the irregular shapes of these pieces of wood, we have to be quite strategic on where we land these plates to ensure that we're going to have somewhere to put an insert in solid wood. Once we've planned for that and routed everything out, we can then use our Merca sander to sand everything smooth on the inside, and we're doing the exact same thing to the other table that's in Buckeye Burl. Before we start the finishing process on the tables, we can start working on the base for them. So both of these bases are going to be constructed from ash, which is quite a popular wood for our bases, as you guys have probably noticed. It's actually basically the primary wood that we end up using. We very, very rarely do a base in another species. Typically though, as you've probably also seen, we end up staining this ash black just because it has a really nice modern look that complements well with many wood species. Another unique aspect of this project is that both of these base designs are brand new for us and they were proposed by the client, so it was a collaboration with our design and his to come up with these designs that he had in mind and the first one that you're seeing here now is the base for the round table. So we're laminating plies of ash 
together to form essentially a, a T-shaped cross for the top and bottom. Both of these pieces are arched, as you can see. And then we're going to have to do a bent lamination, which you'll see coming up, that's going to join these two crosses between the top and bottom of the table. What you're seeing Curtis do here right now is sending those laminations through our old SCM planer after the glue up. And additionally, he's just using a glue scraper to get the glue off those surfaces that we couldn't send through the planer. From there, we can begin sanding all these pieces up. We're going to take them to about 180 grit before we go to apply the black and finish on them. And here's where you can see the cross that I was mentioning earlier. So both of these halves are designed to have a half lap joinery so that when they fit together, the top surface will be nice and flush. As an adhesive, we're using Tight Bond 3 here, which is probably overkill because it's designed for exterior environments. But with most of our pieces, the design is overkill because we want to ensure that we're going to have lots of longevity out of them. Here's the bent lamination that I was mentioning earlier. So we have to do four of these laminations and we created our jigs using MDF. And we then also had to get creative on how to manage to clamp these around such a tight radius. So what we came up with was these very large ratchet straps, which as you can see, did an excellent job of pulling all those plies nice and tight to the form. Something else that we do with these arches and laminations is we leave them in the clamp for much longer than we would if let's say we're just doing a tabletop glue up because what we found is that if you don't give it that extra time you get quite a bit of spring back. So in this case I think these laminations ended up staying in here for a couple of weeks and then at that point we can pop them out and begin scraping off that excess glue. Now that we have these curved shapes, we do have to make some kind of non-standard operations as you can see. So here we are using the jointer with two people to do this safely and curving it over that big open blade just to ensure we're getting a nice flat bottom on there. Then it's time to cut the pieces down to their final length. So to do this safely, we're using our SCM panel saw and we have a sled that's been clamped down to the table and then we're also clamping down our curved laminated pieces. Another detail that the client requested for this piece was a high polish metal detail that joined these four center laminations. So this was something that we had to get custom machined by a mill shop here and even just this small detail was $1400 our cost before we did any polishing or finishing on the piece. Just to give you an idea of some of the costs associated with something like this. From there we can begin to do our final fit up. So we have the bottom piece placed on, our arches are roughly clamped into place, our center metal detail is in there, and then we've also clamped on our top piece. At this point, we, we can begin to screw all of these components together. So we're just using wood screws for this. It does give us the option, I guess, if you ever needed, you could take this base apart. Let's say if a component got damaged or if something did end up cracking over time, it is possible to knock it down and repair this base. But with the type of construction that we've done here and the material we've used, I really don't see anything ever happening to this. Now onto the base for the Buckeye Burl table. So this one was kind of unique. It did feature half lap joinery, but we had two pieces that were both going to be sitting on an angle and it was hard to wrap our heads around how we were going to make them. So what you saw Curtis do there is make some cardboard mock-ups that he half lapped together to try and get an idea of what this will look like. Once we have a plan of attack for how we're going to go about this, we can begin gluing up the material for this base. So like the base for the olive wood burl table, we're also using ash on this piece and it's also going to get stained black. But before we do that, we've put a finger joint on all the edges of these pieces before we glue them together. Then once those pieces are cured and glued up, it's over to our CNC machine to begin cutting out the rough shapes for this base. So there's four total pieces that we're going to cut out like this. Two of them are going to have the notch in the bottom while the other two are going to have the notch in the top so that we can form that half lap. There you can see one of the half lap pieces put together and now we have to cut the angles that are going to allow these pieces to sit the way we want. So even though we've made a cut that is perpendicular to the surface of these pieces, the client doesn't want either of them sitting straight up and down on a 90 degree angle to the floor. So we had to calculate the angle required on the top and bottom of both pieces to tilt them just enough so that client can get what he's looking for. Like the tabletops, these bases are also going to get a round over and it's just going to help to tie all the details in together on this piece. We are leaving the bottom flat though just so there's a larger surface area that's going to touch the ground and we have room to put our protective felt on the bottom. Then we're sanding these pieces up to 180 grit while also filling in any of our imperfections with some filler before we take them upstairs to begin applying the black stain that's going on all of the base components. We're using the General Finishes black dye stain for all of these pieces and it's something that we carry on our website 
website if you're interested in purchasing some yourself. In all the products that we've tried to stain things black, we find it does the best job of leaving everything very consistent while also still allowing clarity of the grain throughout. So you can see a really good example of this right now with the ash. All of those hard and soft areas in the wood grain are obviously present and we get a really rich even black color. Again we're doing the exact same thing to the base for the round table. Once all of this stain has cured for a week we can then come back with our black forest furniture oil and put a clear coat on all of these pieces. As you can see once you apply the oil it brings out the gloss in them and even further enhances the appearance of the wood grain. And then back to this metal detail that I mentioned earlier. The client wanted a high gloss finish, almost like a chrome look is what he requested. So although this is created from aluminum, we were able to sand it all the way up to a mirror finish to give that chrome appearance that he wanted. And we're doing the exact same thing for the feet details on this base. So these go on every corner of the round table and again, just help tie into some of the other details in his space. To fasten these to the underside of the base, we're using PL400. There wasn't really any way for us to get fasteners. Uh, we didn't have a lot of thickness at this point on the base. And then if we didn't countersink them, they would be protruding into the floor. So we've opted for PL400 and in our experience, this is an adhesive that is gonna hold for a very long time and something like this isn't going to get a lot of force pulling on it either. And then since this client is going to be using this piece quite heavily, he opted for the acrylic urethane finish to get maximum durability. The only downside of this finish is that it does form a layer over the wood and you can't really feel the wood grain anymore, but if you're someone who doesn't want to have to do any maintenance on your piece and you just want to essentially use it and not have to worry about that, we do recommend the acrylic urethane. As an alternative to the acrylic urethane, we offer our Black Force Furniture Oil in combination with the Black Force Ceramics. And this finish, we feel, kind of offers the best of both worlds in that you still get an acceptable level of durability, but you also get to feel the wood grain from your piece. So it's not the kind of finish that you can, let's say, spill anything and everything on and never wipe it up and expect it not to leave a stain. It can leave stains, but it is the kind of finish that if you end up getting one of those marks, you can easily maintain the piece, remove it, and have it looking brand new. So really, it ends up coming to the client lifestyle on which finish option is going to be best for them. And from there we can begin fastening the plates to the bases that are going to allow them to get fixed to the underside of the table. So to do this we have custom steel plates that are laser cut and we do end up making custom plates for every single table we do because the shape of the piece of wood in the tabletop is different on every piece. So we're using traditional wood screws to screw that plate into the top side of the base. We are putting a little dab of beeswax on the end of each screw just to help with some lubrication so those screws don't get bound up in there. And once we have those plates fastened, we can flip the base over and put it into the corresponding recess where we can then mark out for the threaded inserts that are going to allow this base to be fixed to the underside of the table. To do that, we're just using a center hole punch and a hammer, and that's going to give us a spot to line up the point on our drill bit to ensure that we don't have any of our holes that aren't perfectly lining up, which could then throw off the entire alignment of the whole base. The threaded inserts are a two-step process. So first, we have a drill bit that's the proper size for the insert itself. Second, we have a countersink bit that allows the head of that insert to fit flush with the wood. And from there, you can install that piece directly into your wood. And some people I've seen online, they'll put a little dab of super glue or five minute epoxy to help fix it in there. It's not something we've ever done and we've never had any issues with them coming out. And now that all the inserts are done, we can flip the top over, get it lifted onto the base and start to get ready to get a look at the finished products here. And then as a final detail on each piece, we like to add a cast pewter badge. So this is something that we had custom made for us and it's just a way to recognize an authentic Black Forest piece and our clients really seem to appreciate it. Now we're gonna repeat that exact same process for the round table, but if you want, you can skip ahead to the timestamp below to see these finished products. All right, now center the plate. 133, 137. Okay, now just measure on the plate, make sure it's little energy balls from a cafe and the guy blew inside the paper bag went 
and then put the oh, things God. in. I was like, what the Did you call that on or just yeah. took it? So my corner will go down. Yeah, you seem like the kind of guy who knows how to do the cup song dance. No, sir. Yo, I tried when I was in like grade six when I was super hey, one. I think it's the first time I'm getting it. Yeah, my grade six year was like party rock anthem and dang that style. You. Sorry, I keep on. My bad. I was kidding. Alrighty. Straight down a little bit. Alright. Alright, we're looking good. Down, down. There we are. That's for the baby bolts. Wait, can you just go in, please? What do you need? Get someone up top to shift it. It's good. Well, here we are with both tables complete. This client really selected pretty much the best of the best when it came to wood species. So on the round one here, we've got the olive wood burl, and we have our Walter White base layer that we've done on this with the clear top layer. And what I was most excited about for this piece is the new custom base design that we've come up with. So this client had something very specific in mind that he kind of helped us come up with. So how we've done it and what you guys saw, there's the bent laminated ash and then we've laminated all of this for thickness, not in plies, but if you get really close up on this, you can kind of see those plies. But since we've blackened everything, it almost just looks like one big curved piece. And then we've got custom cut aluminum pieces that were water jet cut, polished by us. So really fancy. I think there's almost like $1,400 just in this polished bit of aluminum there and these pieces for the feet. And then over to this table, we have the Buckeye Burl with a tinted black resin and also a new base design on this. Not quite as complex, but it's black and ash to match the other piece. And the most challenging part about building this base is that none of the two pieces are straight. So if you notice this piece, it's on an angle this way and the other piece is tilted towards me. So there wasn't any straight 90 degree cuts to be made on this. So just made it a bit trickier to put together, but all in all, I think it made for two really awesome pieces. So we appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and make it through to the end and let us know between these two pieces, which was your favorite and we'll see you next week. Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest. Okay, let me. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Dylan. <laughs>